Hello, my name is Emily and I am the owner and artist at Weather Hearts Designs. I am a brand ambassador for Armacost Lighting and today I'm going to show you a quick tutorial on how I do a very simple install of the LED tape light kit on a china cabinet like this. So let's get started. So here is the kit right outside of the packaging. This is the Armacost Lighting Tunable White Kit. And this is probably my favorite of the kits that I've tried so far. Um, I do like how you can switch between cool, neutral, and warm coloring. But here it is, we have the LED tape lights. It has the 3M tape on the back, which is perfect for sticking inside a piece of furniture. You don't have to worry about um, any other adherence than that 3M strip. You have your little uh, cables here which um, can extend it. They also are great for going around 90 degree angles because you don't want to bend the tape lights um, really sharp. So these are good for that. You of course also have the remote in there for easy on off dimming, um, switching between cool and warm. So I'll show you that as well. And then we have the power supply that plugs directly into the wall. Now, I have two options of what I can do for this cabinet. There is no hole already that I can feed my power supply through. I don't want to drill a hole that is this big to fit the power supply out to plug into the wall. So instead, I'm going to disassemble the power box here and I'm going to take this thin negative and positive wire out and instead that's going to be what I feed through the back of my cabinet. So let me show you how easy it is to take this apart. All you need for this is just a small Phillips screwdriver and there are two small screws in there. And just like that, this little end cap pops off. So I'm going to set that to the side. Now these wires are still held in here by two more really small screws. So I again need to stick my screwdriver in there and unscrew little itty bitty Phillips screws. And just like that, it raises it up enough to where you can then pull your negative positive cable out. Now don't worry at this point of getting confused as to which cable is which. On the power supply box, it tells you that the gray is negative and the white is positive. And so there's the white side and there's the gray side. You'll just match those up as you put it back together. There are a couple different ways that you can do this install. On the previous cabinet I did, I kept this power box inside of the cabinet attaching to the wall. I actually removed this side of the, um, there's again two screws so you can remove this wire if you want. That way is a little bit more complicated. Uh, one, you need to drill a bigger hole and two, there is not a gray and a white wire that you're matching up to the positive negative so you kind of have to write um, either with a fine tip sharpie on the wire as to which goes where um, or you can tape it off. But the way that I'm doing it this time is I'm actually going to be installing this. It is going to go in the back side underneath of the cabinet. There are two holes on the power box, one here, one here, and that is gonna allow me to put a small screw in. So this is going to be held underneath the bottom of the cabinet where it will be out of sight, out of mind, and still easy to plug into the wall. So here we are at the back of the piece. I have a 1 8 drill bit and I am going to go ahead and drill a small hole. Again, this is very, very small compared to what we would have to drill if we were putting the plug in through. So I'm going to go ahead and just line this up and uh, drill this straight through the back. It's going to pop out on the other side and then um, I'm going to actually come in from the other side as well and drill it that way just to get a really clean hole that I can feed my cord through. Okay, 
just like that. Very, very, very small, super easy to do. We have our really teeny tiny little hole there that this wire is going to feed through. Now, if you feel like the 1 8 drill bit is a little bit too tight, a couple things you can do, you can take your drill and drill through a little bit, uh, kind of opening up that hole more. If you feel like you need to step up the drill bit, absolutely do that. Whatever works best for you, um, this has worked for me so far, but it is a little bit of a tight fit going through on the uh, where they connect together right here. So I'm going to go ahead and feed this through, show you that it goes through with ease. I did unravel this. I also slid that tag down the cord a little bit so that I don't have any issues with that getting stuck trying to go through this little hole, which obviously would not fit. All right, you got it poking through the other side and then you simply just pull it through to however um, far you need it. I will show you now how I'm going to attach at the bottom the uh, power supply and then reconnecting it. Here we are at the bottom of this piece. I have my wire fed through. I have my power supply here which is going to be attached to the inside. It's sitting up underneath but attached to the inside of this about an inch thick backboard and I'm going to put the wire, reattach it back in at gray, negative, white, positive, and put my cover back on my, my plate. Get all of that tightened down, and then I have, where did they go? Oh, here they are. <laughs> These really itty bitty small screws, and that is going to be what goes into the little holes, one here and then one here, that's going to attach it inside up under here. We're back at the back of this piece yet again, and I want to do something to kind of clean up the looseness of this wire. I know nobody's probably going to see the back of this piece, but I just like everything to be super clean and um, organized. <laughs> so we're gonna do that with this wire here. You can see down here is where that power cord is attached to the wall, uh, the back wall of this board here, and it's not coming off. This can be just plugged into the wall. Now, before you go any further, you do probably want to plug it in just to make sure that you reattached everything correctly. Um, I did just to make sure it turned on, no problem. So I have it now unplugged for this step because nobody wants to get shocked. I have my staple gun and I am going to just pull this nice and tight and I am going to staple it so that it stays tight and it's not just loosey goosey can get caught on something. So I'm gonna go in from an angle just like you would if you are putting um, a cardboard backing like the hard press board backing on a picture frame. I'm gonna do the same thing so that it attaches right in the angle, right in the corner. And then I also, you can go off of the marks on here to know where your staples are going to come out of. So I need to line this up nice and even in between those lines. Just like that. Now it's held in the corner. Um, I will probably need to take a small hammer and just give it a little tap to get it um, a little bit tighter. You don't want it too tight on your cord, but right now it's nice and loose because it is right in the corner. see now it is much better and it is nice and flat along this piece so there's less risk of it getting caught on something as it's being moved and uh, pulling that wire out. So now let's go ahead and flip it back to the inside or back to the front side I should say and I will show you how I'm going to put the tape lights right on the inside. What I'm gonna do I have removed the shelves for this part and I have cleaned the um, inside walls in the top going along the very front of this piece. So I'm going to tape a nice straight line right up the inside 
and I want it closer to the inside of this wall up along that side panel. clean up that still but you can see it goes all the way up and then instead of cutting it and putting the cord in the corner uh, what I've done is I just I didn't attach it all the way up in that sharp corner and still I instead I just attached it uh, to the wall to about here and then to the um, top there so it kind of curves around and then it goes all along the um, the top and comes down the side right here. Now I have a lot extra because this is a 16 foot kit and I do not need that much length. So what you can do is you can actually write on these copper areas. There's a small line that goes right in between uh, the center of them. I'm trying to get it to focus. There we go, that line right in the center there you can cut with scissors right on that line and um, there's many copper um, areas all throughout this kit. There's one there and so you can cut at any of those. So I'm going to go ahead and cut at this one and I'll probably have just a tiny bit extra so I will just um, continue it down right about here and then we'll see what it looks like. In this kit, along with the little connector cables, you also get, there are these little clips that have 3M tape on the back. So I'm going to use those to um, attach the side panel here that is going to hold that cord in place so it's nice and neat. Here we are on the inside. I use those two clips on the side over there to hold that cord nice and tight and straight. And then I did end up putting just a couple more staples to hold this cord in place so that it's up against that wall. And again, that is something that you don't see even as you move your way around this piece. The moment of truth that it's all put together, this took probably, I mean, I've been recording the whole process, so it's taken a little bit longer. I could easily get this done in about 10 to 15 minutes. So that's a really quick thing. Um, but now I want to show you guys what it looks like with the lights on because we've been waiting for this. And it's amazing and I am so excited, you guys. Okay, ready? <laughs> what? <laughs> Look at that. Oh my goodness, it looks so good. So much better than those one, like the single lights that's up at the top that you have to constantly get in there and fiddle with the light bulbs because they go out, burn out, uh, they don't produce even light all throughout. This is such a great option for something that's clean, it's energy efficient, it's going to last for many years. It also has a remote. You don't have to get down there and start working with switches, trying to figure out where the switch is behind the piece to get it on and off. You have your remote, you can go put it in the other room even and turn it on from across the room. So. Um, let's go through the settings of this remote. So this is what the remote looks like. You have the on off, you have the brightness level, so up and down, you have the warmth level and coolness level here going straight across. You also have the 10%, 50%, and then 100% if you just want to quick, like quickly dim it without going through all the different settings because there is probably about 10 settings in between each. And then at the bottom there is um, the cool, which it's on. There is neutral. And then there's warm. <laughs> so warm is really warm. But you have the option to switch between all of them, which is so nice because depending on where this is going in your home, if you want to try to get the best match as far as lighting goes, like from, say it's going somewhere like in a dining room that's connected to a kitchen, like an eat-in kitchen. 
Um, maybe the lights in the kitchen are a little bit warmer and you want this to match. You don't want something that's like blue, white, like really, really cool, and then have warmer lights in your kitchen. So you can go through, and if that's too much of a dramatic increase from the cold, which it's on right now, to neutral, you can go through and you can manually adjust a bunch of different settings in between each until you get it just right. So I highly recommend this kit, you guys. This is the Armacost Lighting Tunable White Kit. One more thing that I wanted to tell you before I end this video, do not throw away your excess lighting if this kit is too big because this kit only comes in 16 feet currently. If that is too much for you, don't waste the extra. Hang on to it and keep these on hand as well, the connector cables, because later down the road, if you wanna add under cabinet lighting in your kitchen, which is what I did, I ended up using about one and a half, um, I think it was one and a half kits to do the under cabinet lighting in my kitchen. And so save your excess rolls because you can always add it onto a different kit later. It just has to be the tunable white kit that you add it onto. So don't go getting the Ribbon Flex Pro kit and trying to connect these two. They are slightly different. And so this does have to be connected to another tunable white kit. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial and if you are into the whole furniture refinishing, DIY home improvement on a budget, um, quick hacks like this, I would love it if you give me a like, a follow, a subscribe, all of the things. You can find me on most social media platforms at Weathered Hearts Designs and I love to connect with you guys so make sure to leave a comment as well.